Julia turned her head, looking at her husband. He was asleep, trying not to make any noise. She slowly threw back the blanket from her and got out of bed. The girl silently walked out of the bathroom and closed the door behind her. In the evening, she struggled to put her daughter to bed. The girl wanted to eat, but there was nothing but bread in the house. Julia spread jam on a slice and gave it to the little Sandra. She ate in an instant and asked for more. For a year now, the family had been living on starvation. John was confined to a wheelchair, and Julia had to think every day how to buy him medicine, how to feed the family, how not to die of a hunger. She felt sorry for her daughter, sorry for her husband, but there was not enough money for anything. The girl got dressed and went outside, shivering a little from the cool night air. They met two years ago. John seemed to Julia a good, kind guy. The girl trusted him, and a week after meeting him, they began to live together. Like all girls, she dreamed of a wedding, a beautiful white dress, and a golden ring, but all of that didn't happen. Just one evening, John walked to her door, and Julia offered to come over to visit her. One morning, John said, You're the right guy for me. If you like me too, let's live together. Julia was not sure that she was doing the right thing, letting a very unfamiliar guy into her life. But two months later, she realized she was pregnant. Coming out of the bathroom in the early morning, she handed John a pregnancy test. Do you really want to have a baby? The guy asked. I think it's too soon for us to have kids. But he's already there. His heart is beating John. All right, have it, he nodded. If that's what you want, I should have used protection. All the months of her pregnancy, Julia felt lonely. John was always at work. And when he didn't have to work a shift, he was fixing the car he drove in the evenings. The man was a cab driver dreaming of making enough money to replace his old broken-down car with a new one. One day, Julia was coming home from the store. Hey, girl, you could reach her something. You walk by without saying hello. An old high school friend, Monica, caught up with the girl. I didn't recognize you. Julia was happy. At school, she and Monica were very friendly, shared secrets and spent a lot of time together. The girls hugged each other, happy to see each other. How are you? I see you're going to be a mom soon. Monica noticed her friend's belly bulging under her dress. Yes, Julia was confused. So we shall definitely talk, Monica declared. Come on, there is a nice cafe nearby. Let's have a coffee and talk. Julia looked at her watch. John will be home from work soon, and she still had to prepare dinner for her husband. But the temptation to talk to her friend was so great. The girl agreed. In the cafe, they sat at the table by the window. Tell me, did you get married? Monica asked. No, we just live with my boyfriend. Julia shook her head. John thinks that it is pointless to spend money on a wedding, saving for a new car. Are you married, Monica? Oh no, cooking dinners and going laundry for a man, it's not for me, laughed her friend. I value my freedom. I live for my own pleasure, and I'm not going to be a domestic servant. I thought you never dream of being a housewife either. It just happened, Julia replied with a sigh. Do you even love him? Monica asked, noticing that her friend was not too happy to talk about her family life. I suppose not, Julia said uncertainly. John is a good man, and we're going to have a baby. I see that you're not glowing with happiness. So why do you need this guy? If he does not cause a fairy enthusiasm in your eyes. Monica looked into her friend's face, but she averted her eyes. Yeah, John doesn't spend much time with me. 
But he works hard so that the baby and I don't need anything. She tried to argue with her friend. Okay, that's up to you. Do you already know what's going to be born? Monica changed the subject, seeing that Julia was not very pleased to discuss her husband with her friend. We don't know yet. She smiled, glancing at her watch again. I'm sorry, Monica, but I have to go. John will be home from work soon. Of course I do. But you write down my phone number and call me if you want to talk or just see me, Monica suggested. The girls exchanged phone numbers and left the cafe. At home, over dinner, Julia told her husband that she'd met a friend from school. Why don't you invite Monica over to our house? suggested John. Why? You're alone all the time. It will be more fun if your friend come over once in a while. You two could go out together. Go out. I don't think Monica and I are as close as we used to be. She's single, living on her own. And you and I are about to have a baby, or... That's good. Monica could visit you and help you, your friends. Well, if you don't mind, I will invite her for dinner on Sunday, John insisted. Monica gladly agreed to Julie's proposal to come to visit. On the appointed day, the girl declared to make a pie to treat her school friend. John was fixing the car in the yard as usual when a spectacular slender brunette in a high heel shoes walked past him. Whoa, where is a pretty girl like that going? He asked, pulling away from the monitor. I'm going to my friend Julia's house. The girl replied with a charming smile. Do you know her? Sure, John replied, wiping his hands with a rag. That's my wife. Oh, so you're John. The girl smiled even wider. I'm Monica. I'm glad to meet you. Come on, I'll walk you out. Julia was setting the table, arranging the plates and utensils on the snow-white tablecloth. She wanted to show her friend that in her and John's family everything was good, and they were happy. It's nice here. Monica chirped, looking around the apartment of Julia and John. Make yourself at home. Don't be shy, John told her. Monica sat down at the table, smiling at her friend's husband, and he smiled back at her. Pretty, relaxed, confident Monica was very different from his modest wife. Bright makeup, short skirt, high heeled shoes. Julia will not allow herself such an image. Monica looked adorable. John chatting cheerfully with her, not paying attention to the fact that Julia was dashing from room to kitchen, bringing plates, wine glasses, and her fragrant pie. Dinner passed in a relaxed atmosphere, and when Monica was about to go home, John offered to walk her home. Where are you going? He asked Julia, who had taken her coat off the rock. I'll come with you. I want to go for a walk, his wife said. You shouldn't go out. You're already tired today, John told her. Stay home and rest. Julia was confused. Her husband almost never invited her for walks. She thought it would be a good excuse to go for a walk together, to get some fresh air, but John was against it. Julia stayed at home, clearing the dishes from the table, and lay down on the bed. She didn't even notice how tired of housework she fell asleep. The girl woke up to the sound of the door opening. John returned. She was surprised to notice that it was already dark outside the window. What took you so long, John? Julia asked. Monica's house is no more than fifteen minutes away. What is this interrogation? Do I have to answer to you? Answered her husband. John undressed and went to bed, no wanting to answer his wife's questions. Two months later, Julia gave birth to a daughter. How tiny, she said quietly, as a midwife placed a newborn baby girl on her stomach. The girl's is weak, but nothing will get stronger. The main thing is to feed her properly, the doctor advised. 
John picked up his wife and daughter in a new car. He had bought it the day before the birth, telling Julia that he had finally managed to save up the money. The girl was named Sandra. No, all day long Julia was busy with a child. Often, Donna had time to cook, dinner, and clean the apartment. John was not happy. In the evenings, he would leave for work in the new car, installing cap chickers on the roof of the car, and Julia stayed home alone. The unexpected ringing of the phone brought her out of her reverie. Hello, Julia. Can I come and visit you? Monica's voice came through her phone. Of course you can come over. I'll be happy to, answered Julia. Half an hour later, Monica was already on the doorstep. As usual, cheerful with bright makeup in a beautiful dress with a deep neckline, she began to tell Julia the news from the hallway. Imagine recently I was at such a great party. Bahamians, artists, painters, singers, it was fantastic. You have an interesting life, said Julia. I've been with Sandra. John is always at work or working as a cab driver. What can you do, my dear? Everyone chooses his own life. Monica walked over to the crib, where baby Sandra was sleeping peacefully. I don't like children. I don't want to waste the best years of my life on diapers and diapers. You just do not realize what a blessing it is to be a mother. Try to convince Monica. In her happy destiny, Julia, when I put her to my breast, I feel like I have my whole life in this baby. What about John? Monica asked, looking at her friend carefully. Don't you love him? I don't know. I feel like we are drifting apart, that John isn't the same as he was a year ago. He doesn't pay any attention to me at all. By the way, I wanted to ask John to take me out of town to my parents. Monica did not go into Julia's problems. Do you think he will say yes? I will call him now. Julia took her phone from the noise stand and deal her husband. John agreed to drive Monica, and an hour later they were in his car. Julia looked out the window as her husband's car drove out of the yard. In the morning, she woke up and did not find her husband in the apartment. The girl fed and changed her daughter's clothes and poured herself a cup of coffee. She felt uneasy in her heart. I have to call John, she thought, but the call was answered by an unfamiliar female voice. Who are you? Julia asked. I'm a doctor. Your husband is in a hospital. He's been in an accident. Come over. There was a short beeping sound. Julia, dumbfounded by this news, sat on the chair, not moving, trying to regain consciousness. Then she slowly got up and dressed her daughter, put her in the stroller, and went to the hospital, the address of which was given to her by a strange woman. John was laying on the hospital bed, not moving. His face was bruised, his head was bandaged. Unfortunately, his injuries are too serious, the doctor told her. We have done the operation, but it will take time for him to walk. Oh my gosh, John, how could it be? Julia put her daughter on the bed and sat down next to her husband, stroking his arm. My car, it's rigged, the boy said quietly. What are you talking about? We have to think of ourselves, Julie exclaimed with her hands. The car is a truffle. We will get another one. The most important thing is that you get well. What do you know? I've been saving for this car for so long. John was angry. He turned away from his wife, showing that he was not going to talk to her anymore. When John was discharged from the hospital, Julia took care of them. She felt sorry for her husband, who suffered from his helplessness. Now he was always in bed, and Julia was torn between him and his little daughter cooking and washing 
ironing, taking care of her husband. One day, Monica dropped by to visit her friend. How's John? Is he not getting better? She asked. Apparently not. He's always lying down and won't get up, Julia said sadly. And we have no money at all now. Everything that was set aside has been spent. So there will be nothing to eat. It's not an easy situation for you, Monica said. The girl thought for a moment, looking out of the window, and then said, I think I know how to help you. How? Was surprised and pleased with her friend. I won't borrow money. I have nothing to pay back anyway. And I do not suggest. You know, I have a friend artist. He needs a model. I can make a deal. But I can leave my daughter with John. She's just a little girl. And then, posing nude in front of a stranger. I don't think I can do that. Julia hesitated. See yourself, Monica shrugged. I could make good money. Julia thought about it. She didn't like her friend's proposal, but she had no other choice. A year passed. The night John woke up to the sound of the door opening. It was getting light outside the window, but it was still too early for her supposed to go out. One year old Sandra slept peacefully in her crib. John wheeled his wheelchair into the hallway. Julia took off her coat, started led to see her husband. John, why you are in your sleep? She asked. Where are you? The man was frowning looking at her. Julia hesitated, not knowing what to say to her husband. For a whole year, she hid from him that she posed nude for various artists. She was afraid that her husband would get angry when he found out how she earned money, and now it was useless to hide it. John, listen to me, please, Julia whispered. I know you won't be happy, maybe even hit me, but I had no other choice. What do you mean? Do you run to other men at night? John was indignant. No, 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 Julia waved her hands. It's different. I work part-time as a model, posting for artists, and they pay me money. There is the only way we manage not to starve to death all this time, and also to buy your medicine. Julia stood in front of John with her eyes downcast. She was afraid of his reactions or her words. He took his eyes off his wife and went to the kitchen in his wheelchair. Julia slowly followed him and sat down on the chair. You did this for me? And daughter? Finally, John raised his eyes to his wife. This is so humiliating. Yes, it's humiliating. But what was I to do? Julia looked at him, feeling tears come to her eyes. John was silent for a while, and then he said, I'm sorry, I did something cruel to you. I revealed in my illness, felt sorry for myself, plunged into depression, and did not even notice how you suffered, Julia. The girl looked at him in surprise. She had not expected such a reaction to her words. Secretly from you, I found on the internet exercises that help with such injuries. Practice sometimes. But I was so used to you taking care of me all the time that I didn't want to get out of the bed. I didn't want to tell you about my achievements. I don't know what you mean, John. Julia looked at her husband, wondering if he was going to tell her to leave. The man more than once started conversation that she will soon get tired of his illness and quit, to which Julia always answered never. John got up from his wheelchair and slowly walked over to his post. He looked into her eyes and hugged her. I love you very much, Julia. Only after this accident did I realize how dear you to me. You and our daughter. For a month now, John had been walking around hiding it from his wife, afraid she would leave him. Julia cried with happiness. She couldn't believe her husband was no longer bedridden and wheelchair-bound 
and he also told her the most important words, which were so missing in her life.